Boy oh boy, do I have a DIY in store for you for today using these wood pieces that you can get at Dollar Tree. This is one you are not going to want to miss. Hey everybody, welcome back to Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose. Yes, in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links. You guessed it in the description box below. Today am I bringing to you a DIY that I am so stinking excited about using these wood pieces here that you can get at Dollar Tree. This is a DIY that is so budget friendly, it's easy to do, and I am gonna go so far as to say that it is just about a 100% Dollar Tree DIY. So I'm gonna quit my cabin, let's jump into it, and let's do some Dollar Tree DIYing on a budget. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Seven of these craft wood sticks are what's needed for this DIY. And six of these wood pallets. You're going to need to do a bit of gluing. Okay, maybe a lot of gluing. The glue that I'm using today is this wood glue by Crazy Glue. This is a glue that you can find in the tool section of Dollar Tree. I have found some great results with this glue. It's amazing. Do not use the Crafter Square wood glue because you will not have great results. I'm gonna glue three of these pallets together and I'm putting glue on three ends of the pallets on the sides and on the top of the pallet using two of those craft wood stick pieces i'm gonna glue them on each side of those pallets just like so there is no cutting needed yet for this because those craft sticks are the right size as the three pallets we've got three pallets left and a third craft stick so i'm going to go ahead and place the glue again on three sides of two of the three pallets. Wow, I'm making this confusing, but you'll see why, because we're gonna glue a pallet above and a pallet below, so one of the pallets doesn't need glue on all three sides. Haha, <laughs> I know, just see how I'm doing it here? Then I'm just gonna slide these pallets right on over up against this wood piece here, putting it in the middle. Then I'm gonna take my other wood piece and it needs to be glued right along the side here, leaving us with a contraption that looks like this. I gave this a minute to dry so it'd be good and sturdy. We've got these end pieces that are missing, so taking two more of the seven craft wood sticks, I'm gonna place them on each end, but these are a bit too long, so there is some cutting involved. Dollar Tree does have a couple of different saws in the wood section that I believe will get the job done. I do have a couple in my stash and before I had my miter saw, I did use them. I'm gonna use that wood glue again and place the glue on each end of what is going to be, soon to be, caddy. I'm gonna place those two wood pieces just like so. For some reason, I decided just to flip this over and let it dry upside down instead of getting some painter's tape out and holding it together. It stayed. There were a couple gaps though, so I took some spackling and filled in those gaps just a bit. I'm gonna take four Jenga blocks here, and those Jenga blocks are gonna go right where each of the pallets meet there inside of the caddy. My caddy needs a handle, so I'm gonna take those last two craft sticks, place a bit of glue here on this bottom section, and I'm gonna place a stick on each side of my caddy just like so. Now, I will tell you, I am not just going to use glue to hold this together. Although I don't show it, and I will show you that there are nails in it, 
Again, one of those times where Kelly didn't press record or I thought I pressed record and I didn't press the button hard enough, I did go in and reinforce this piece with some nails. Dollar Tree's got nails now. Early American Stain is the stain color that I'm using for this caddy. Minwax dries pretty quick and it's summertime, so yes. Now, you will see that I did go in and sand those areas where I did put the spackling. What's great about spackling is when you stain it or paint it, nobody is none the wiser that you filled in any gaps. So don't be afraid to fill in any gaps that you may or may not have if you decide to do this piece because this is not a great quality wood. This is a low grade wood that Dollar Tree carries. You kind of got to realize that you're going to get what you pay for, but there are ways around that and the way around that is just to fill it in with either some wood filler or spackling. The handles to the caddy. I don't want to place another piece of wood. I want to use something else. So I'm going to take my drill and this is a real small drill bit because I don't need a huge hole and I'm going to drill a hole in each caddy handle. Yeah, because I want to use some of Dollar Tree's new square wood beads. I love these. Now there is a reason why I am using these wood beads and you will see later, I don't need the whole strand. So I need to get rid of some of the beads because my handle's gonna be too long and I really don't want it hanging all that low. What's great about these is you can easily undo this string and remove as many beads as you want and place them in your stash because you're gonna need them for another DIY. So I'm gonna place my wood bead handle. See, the string is not very thick. We didn't want the hole any bigger because then when I tie off the string, it's gonna fall through the hole. And since I knew this was what I was gonna use, I knew that the hole for my handles didn't need to be all that big. I can easily thread it through the holes and just tie several knots in the string. So again, it doesn't come through the holes. And now we have just made ourselves a caddy bead handle. Yeah, why not? Just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna hit those knots with a bit of glue just to ensure they don't come undone. I have been looking for an excuse to use these chalkboard frames. Love these, only I'm not so fond of the holes in them. So of course I'm gonna use my spackling and fill them in because 90% of the time these holes serve no purpose. I just wish that they would staple them onto the back. It would save me this step, but Spackling at Dollar Tree is only $1.25, so we'll just use that. I'm gonna take some of that stain, that early American stain. I am loving this color. It might be my new favorite color stain. For a while, I was using the dark walnut, but when I saw the name early American, I'm not gonna lie, there was something really rustic about that, and I thought, okay, self, with the name Early American, it's gotta have a rustic look. I'm bound to love the color and look at there, I do. So I'm gonna give two of these chalkboard frames a good coating of this stain on the front and the back. I'm not too worried about the messy stain job that I did on this because I'm just gonna take some paper towel and clean it right up. And I will say that where I placed the spackling, it did take a couple of coats to get the even color coverage. Yes, of course there's gonna be stitching incorporated into this, but only on these frames. And I figured just because the frames were missing something, I wanted them to pop just a little bit more. I decided that some ivory stitching right around the outside edge of the chalkboard would be perfect. I didn't wanna go around the ruffled edge because I just felt like that would be too much. I really kinda of wanted to keep it simple. It's summer. So this caddy, it's gonna be a s'mores caddy. How fun is that? It's a s'mores station with freshly roasted s'mores and we're gonna be making s'more memories. I've got two of these vinyl decals that I'm gonna place on each of these chalkboard frames. Oh my word, these are so stinking cute. I think I might be obsessed with this caddy. Now, if you're interested in this vinyl decal, it is available in Linda's Etsy store for instant digital download. If you have a Cricut, you're gonna go that route. Save yourself some money, download it to your computer, upload it to Cricut Design Space, and cut it out with some vinyl. If you don't have a Cricut and you want this vinyl, Linda will cut and send it to you with free shipping. You can find the link to her Etsy store in the description box below. 
these adorable signs are gonna find their place on each side of the caddy just like so. Because of the size of the frame, that was why I didn't feel the need to cut down the sticks and make them shorter. So just using some hot glue, I'm gonna go ahead and glue one frame on each side of my caddy. We are so not done yet. You're gonna need six of these chalkboard tags that have clothespins on them because they are the perfect size for this DIY. I'm just taking some wire cutters, gonna pop those clothespins right off because we don't need them and I'm gonna do that to all six of my mini chalkboard signs. And these cute tags, they also need a good coating of that early American stain. And I am going over the chalkboard portion of this to darken it up because I found that these tags, it really isn't chalkboard on these smaller ones, it's just black paint. So I was good to go with going over it with the stain. To these tags, I've made some vinyl decals for the contents in which I'm putting in my s'mores caddy. Now this could be different for everybody. This is the part that makes it so versatile because you can really make it to suit your s'more needs. I'm all about alternatives. So if vinyl isn't for you, Dollar Tree's got this chalk writer, which is amazing that you could really get creative with and you can use for your signs on the side or you can use for those tags. If you do wanna go the vinyl route, I will tell you that Linda has a full bundle available with the two signs and the vinyls for the contents in which I put in my s'mores caddy. Those tags, I'm gonna be using the wood drawers only the insert, I don't need it, so I'm gonna discard that. Really, I'm not, it's gonna go in my stash because we just need the outside portion of it. To the outside portion, I'm not gonna paint it. I'm not doing anything to it except for adding my cute little chalkboard tags. Now that is why I went the route of using the wood beads on the handle because I wanted something to tie in to the bins that I was using for the contents. Now I did notice on the back side of my signs that it was still the raw wood and so me being the perfectionist that I am, I am going to go in with my stain and finish off the back of those tags as well. Since I had six tags, I'm going to be needing six of these wood containers. You can see I put my tags already on each of the containers. Now for these, I like to add pre-packaged items like Reese's peanut butter cups and my Hershey bars. I feel like it's just easier to add something that's pre-packaged to this. I like two different types of graham crackers. I like the chocolate and the honey. When placing them in these bins, I do have plastic wrap around the base of them that I can easily pull up and tie off to keep my contents fresh. And so that's important to me. I do that with the graham crackers and I did line the base of the marshmallow one as well. And I think that this just makes it easier. These marshmallows are the bomb marshmallows for s'mores. You can't use the small round ones anymore. You gotta use these square ones because they're perfect. And just like that, my s'mores caddy is done and I am all good to place my contents in this bin are the Jenga blocks at the bottom a must? They're not, but I figured it was just a fun feature to add to keep the drawers separate so I had nice even spacing. That would be the OCD in me. I like the way it looks. I think that this is such a fun piece. I've got my two bins of marshmallows. I've got my chocolate bars, my Reese's peanut butter cups, my two sets of graham crackers. We are good to go for making s'mores this summer. And truth be told, this bin was made for Allison because she loves being out at our fire pit making s'mores. It's one of her favorite things to do in the summertime. And so this alley is made just for you, my sweet girl. is today's KB Creations crafters of the day. First one's going out to Jackie who's bringing to us her 4th of July tear tray recreation. Jackie, I am loving it. Thank you. Next one's going out to Sherry who's bringing to us her recreation, my DIY Jenga block flag. Sherry, I am loving the distressing and that burnt look that you added to this piece. 
Thank you so much for sharing your recreation with us today. I don't think I've said this in a while, right? Well, maybe I have, but this piece today, this DIY, probably ranks up there with my top 10 favorite DIYs ever that I've done. Why do I love this one so much? One, because it is one that we are gonna get so much use out of. And two, because it was one that Allie wanted so badly and it brought me so much inspiration. And I love that she always says, Mom, go get the s'mores caddy. I wanna make s'mores tonight. I hope you all enjoyed this Dollar Tree DIY s'mores caddy on a budget. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, and I know, I know, I know, I sound like a broken record, but it's true. Each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, well, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now, everybody.